Welcome to another episode of Community Voices. Today we got a very special guest. You might have seen him on a, you know, on stage with the money only Lady Gaga. We got John Drummond with us today, and everybody clap it up, clap it up. John, what's up, bro? How you feeling? I, oh man, I'm good. Hey, alive. You know what I'm saying? I, the old folks say you can't complain, so you know what I'm saying. I'm alive and well, man. I can't complain. Woke up today, so that's always a blessing. Hey, step one. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Yes, sir. Let the world know who you are and your background. So like you said, my name is John Drummond, uh, uh, also known as Johnny Good. That's my stage name. Mm -hmm. uh, there's three O's in Good for the mind, body, and soul. So, you know, it's good vibes. Uh, come from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Come from a long line of, honestly, police officers. You know what I'm saying? Military. Mom was in the Army. Dad was in the Army. My dad's been a cop for about shit. Oh, excuse my French, uh, for about 35 years. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah. So he's been a cop for, man, I'm probably going on 40 years, man, 35, 40 years. And uh, my brother's been a cop. Uh, so, you know, we just come from a family of just people who just help out, look out, civil servants. You know what I'm saying? I found myself playing bass. Uh, I taught myself at 18. That was random. Like you said earlier, you know, I just picked it up one day, read a book, Bass for Dummies. Um, taught myself how to play and and you know did it I was a cop for a couple of years and stopped doing that moved out to LA and long story short ended up with you know artists like The Weeknd, Lady Gaga, uh, Wiz Khalifa you know just a bunch of cats man Young Thug you know I just did some stuff with him like three days ago so Beautiful. you know just enjoying man enjoying life man experience of it you know what I'm saying. Absolutely so you give like yeah. a very you know different perspective as far as like how policing is within the black community so speak on you know your experience as a police officer and you know I feel like from the outside looking in we hear so many stories about quotas being made and you see like the statistics that show like black people get arrested like way more than any other race and things of that nature so speak to that as like a former police officer yeah as far as the quotas go I, I got to debunk that, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. as far as where I worked. I worked in Savannah, Georgia, you know what I'm saying, Savannah, Chattel, Metro. So there was definitely no ticket quota or nothing like that. But um, like I said, I come from a long line of black police officers, you know what I'm saying? It, it goes even to my sister was a dispatcher, you know what I'm saying, my older sister. So she was the one putting us on calls, you know, and then going back to my, my older cousins, you know what I'm saying, my uncle. So every body around me you know and where i'm from you know the you know i'm from pittsburgh so i'm definitely from an inner city you know but my my people chose to you know help out you know my dad didn't make the best decisions even as a police officer you know as a as a, just a human being off duty you know but at the same time he woke up every day shined his boots and you know tried to try to stop crime or tried to help out in some way that he could and i just always you know, found the, a deep respect and a calling to that. So that's what I did. You know, I went through the academy, graduated number one. And for, for me, to be honest, it's, it's just like any other school you go to. Mm -hmm. uh, the issues start right there. You know, like I, to me, seeing how the world is unfolding and we've always been in this issue to where, for sure, I mean, we're, I feel, I still feel like we're arrested way more, you know what I'm saying, than, mm -hmm. than our peers, you know what I'm saying, white folk or, or you know, people who don't look like us. That's, I can't say that's not true. I, I still believe that if I'm driving my car, even while I was a cop, I, I remember getting pulled over while having a gun and badge on and still being scared, you know what I'm saying? So I think that just comes with the territory. But at the same time, I, you know, for me, I had a, a moral oath to, you know, to make a change instead of, you know, furthering the divide. Let me see what's really going on behind the curtain. So then, you know, uh, as I grow older, as an adult, you know, I can have a more um, gathered view of what's happening, you know, like I feel like I have now because I was actually a cop. But like I'm saying, uh, the issues to me start in the academy, the training, you know what I'm saying? And that's, I feel like that's where the issue needs to start right mm -hmm. there. So, you know, we, we skipped a couple of steps and went on to defund. You know what I'm saying? And that means I would have lost my job. My dad, we are, they already don't get paid enough. That's a whole nother issue. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think we need to pull back and think about retraining, reforming, you know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, so, but yeah, the issues are real. You know, the stuff that we see in real life, you know, it, 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 it exists. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You can't, we can't make it up. So 
But I think being a black police officer, it, it gives you a, a different perspective, you know, because there are black people who call the cops. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I showed up to many black families and I had to figure some stuff out with them, you know what I'm saying? Or so, something had to happen, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, it was equal. We had white people calling, black people calling. So, but at the same time, there is a lot of uh, disproportionate stuff happening in the streets as well. So, you know, I can rant on that all day, dog. Like, <laughs> For real. So how do like how do we repair the relations between you know the police officers and just like the black community in general? Because you know some people are scared to call police. You know some people are like yeah. you know, like you mentioned earlier, like you're driving and you get pulled over. I'm like, damn, I might get yeah. I might, this might be my last day on earth. And, yeah, you know, yeah. I yeah. Hey, you, you see mayors, you see uh, very important people who's black getting pulled over, still scared. Athletes, you know, it doesn't matter what you do. If you black, you just going to feel, you just feel that tension. Like, it ain't your okay. fault. I don't want to feel it, but it's there. So we can't sit here and lie and be like, well, nothing's going on here. There's mm -hmm. absolutely something going on. But I found myself doing something because even though I was a cop, and I, I like to say cop, and I think, honestly, police officers got away from what cop actually means community oriented police service you know what i'm saying like that means something so think about it if if you're not if if i'm being a cop right in a community where i'm not oriented i don't know what's going on i'm not privy to the language i'm not privy you can put me in the suburb and if and if i'm too if, if my language doesn't fit what they're trying to convey to me right then i'm not community oriented you know what i'm saying i need to go read a book on how they how they live their life, their culture, you know what I'm saying? So I think the issue starts right there. And I think that's why it's important to have black cops, Hispanic cops, Indian cops, all types of cops, you know what I'm saying? Because, and you need it, you need community oriented police officers. So I think police officers got to get back to that concept, you know what I'm saying? Like, where's the sticker in, for the kid actually in the community? Like, but um, man, the issue that, that I mean, I. I the way to repair, honestly, uh, on our side, like I found myself just going on Google and actually doing the, the research behind just the the creation of police officers, you know what I'm saying? And it goes farther, it goes even further to the slave patrol, you know what I'm saying, that they created in the 1700s. That was, they started that in South Carolina. It goes before that. So it was created, you know, for thieves and people who were, who, who had a valuable asset and needed protection. You know what I'm saying? And then it evolved and then it became uh, a wicked situation down south. And that's what we're kind of traumatized by. And then that's kind of how they were treated as well in the street. So the repair, I think the repair starts on the police officer side. It has to be reform. You know what I'm saying? So I think there has to be reform. And I can't, I wish I had enough cheese to actually get that into the right ears because it can really be that simple. Like every cop, every year, you got to have a couple hours of training every year, sit them in some classes and actually reform how they how they act, you know what I'm saying? Retrain them. And if they can't, if they can't hold that, then they gotta go. You sure. know what I'm saying? So because like you like you said, it really comes down to the training in the in the academy, because that's where you learn what you're supposed to do in the field, you know. And if you apply those, you know, just like whether it's diversity training or having you know, people who live within the community become officers where they know who this kid's parent is or who this person is, where it's right. easy to believe versus like having somebody who doesn't know the dynamics of living, you know, in a in an urban city or like, you know, in a black community where they come in, they're scared because they don't know. And then out of, <laughs> out of them being scared and then quick to like, you know, put That's gun, it. you know, shoot somebody or walk in like the staircase for projects and you know, if you grew up in that space, you're not scared of, you know. That's it, bro. <laughs> if you don't, if you're not aware, you don't come from that, you know, that kind of background. And it's like nine o'clock at night, you're going up the staircase, you might get scared because, you know, you you just haven't, like you mentioned, the COP. Yeah, yeah. You've know, been living in that community. To really yeah. That in the dynamic, so. You just, deep, I mean, in my opinion, you just broke everything down perfect that's I, I feel like for real that that goes back to the cop but yeah. like i mean if, if i'm in if where i'm from if i'm walking around making sure that i'm safe how are you gonna come in over here and you don't even know you're left from right, right. all you just see is a bunch of people you don't even know their name you don't know 
so how are you gonna feel like you safe? So, and that's the thing you learn as a as a cop. And it was fun for me because it was like, dang, like this shield and badge and all that don't make it don't make seat like the ground give. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't make it cushion when you fall. So you still have fight or flight in you, even as a cop. Yeah. And like you said, the issue starts like I mean, that's that's a very, very like dangerous situation when you're dealing with, like you said, people not from this area afraid of people who don't look like them, you know what I'm saying? I, I, like even as, all right, let, let me let me be honest, in the police academy, man, I was still a minority, you know what I'm saying? There were more white people than me, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I didn't necessarily deal with racism. My brother went through the same uh, academy. He didn't deal with racism. Our instructors were white. We didn't deal with racism. But what we dealt with was just like in any other trade, any other school, you got the 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 tryhards you got the people who out here really finishing first like like me I graduated number one I studied you know what I'm saying I was working hard and then you got the people who you looking at like you know you shouldn't be here exactly. you know what I'm saying it ain't got nothing to do with you being right. racist and I we, I've had those conversations with certain people being a leader in, in the academy and you can take it back to man shout out to my instructor Major Provo I still remember his name mm -hmm. uh, I haven't seen him hope he's still alive you know what I'm saying but maybe find him, he'll tell you, but there's people there and it's like, you probably shouldn't be a cop. They graduate last in the academy, barely make it through by the skin of their teeth. Right. And then they go out and tackle an old black lady and, and she breaks her hip. And it, we know that it was an issue of him just not having a fortitude to even put the badge on really. Right. But the world sees it as here's a white man who tackled a black lady. Oh, he must hate black people. He's racist. Mm -hmm. I was in the academy with him for 26, 30 weeks. I never, he never treated me like he, you know what I'm saying? But it was more so he was a coward and he probably shouldn't have had this badge on. And I think that's, to me, to be honest, that's more of the issue of what I see are people who are afraid of us. They're just af like, we're, I mean, in my opinion, we're very strong, powerful people. You know what I'm saying? And if you don't match up strong, powerful people with strong, powerful people who know how to handle people like us, then it's going to, it's going to be toxic. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's never going to work. Somebody who's you know, scared and then does yeah. like that doesn't even need to be done and you just take it to a whole nother yeah. level. It's like, bro, like you don't even have to do all that. Just talk to the person, you know? Yeah. yeah. And and I won't even, you know, not to make it like a, a, a only once you, you know, fits all because that's a very small section of the 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 police force or yeah. or the world because I've had amazing white partners who helped save my life. You know what I'm saying? I've been in situations to where this guy didn't look nothing like me, but we counter on, on, on each other, you know what I'm saying? And the same, you know, and, and, and as a musician working with Lady Gaga, you know, I, I might be one of the few that look like me, but no one here hates me and I don't hate you. So, yeah. you know, we just got to learn how to work together, but we're in a gun and badge to much is given, much is required. So you can't, you can't make mistakes in yeah. this business. And I think we're seeing just a bunch of mistakes and we lost trust, even me, you know, righteously so, you know, too much happening out here. So last question for you. So what are your thoughts on, you know, when people make mistakes, like you think about being a doctor and if you fuck up during surgery, like that's your license, like you out of here, you know, mm -hmm. probably get a lawsuit on top of that too. And I feel mm -hmm. like in every, you know, profession, if you fuck up in a way, then it's like you're clipped and you got to deal with that what happens in your life after that Fact. Right? you know <laughs> father, so i feel like all these mistakes happen because of qualified immunity people are just like kind of get that duty for mm -hmm. months and get right back into the field so mm -hmm. i think that exists where you know every other profession is like that but when it comes to policing it's almost like a like a get out of fr uh, jail free card where it's like <laughs> do something crazy. It's like, all right, cool, boom. And then you're back into the, into the field. Yeah, that's completely backwards. Like, but I think that's what I mean by the reform. You know what I'm saying? Like those type of codes have to change. Cause like you said, it's harder for me to be, keep a job as a musician, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But I laugh because, you know, when, when you're a cop, all you really hear is job security. You know, yeah. it's like, it's almost like boasted, like, job security this is the one profession to where you cannot you know what I'm saying if you want to be a cop we got a job for you mm -hmm. and I, that is completely backwards you know what I'm saying like that's I think that's the main issue that shouldn't happen you know what I'm saying and you shouldn't thing, even be able to make it past the academy because let's say I accidentally shoot somebody and kill them 
right now, right? It's over for me. I'm getting clipped, like no matter what the situation is. But you know, you right? Says whereas like some people are running away, still shoot at them. Like you know, people are unarmed, still shoot at them. Right. And right, it's just it, it gets frustrating because you know they're in the wrong, and this video is showing that they right somehow some way. It's like they get off or they do right moms, and then that's it. Right. Those people should have been clipped in the academy. Like yeah. those people were weak before they even put the badge on. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it's more than just a few bad apples. Like there's just cowards out there who instead of putting the, stra strapping on their boots and going out and chasing somebody who's running from them, they'll shoot them because they don't even want to catch them to fight them in the first place. Right. You know what I'm saying? But these people could have been weeded out before they even made these mistakes. Yeah. That's the issue. That's the issue that I feel like in my heart is the problem like these people who are doing this hiring process and are over these people who's out on the streets they know they're dealing with people who shouldn't be doing a job yeah. but at the same time they let them go out here and run around like you said with a gun and badge on and invoking their authority with no idea what they're doing in the first place so it's it's man it's tragic it's tragic to see man and it's it's sad that we have to live in a country to where you got powerful people destroying families and lives you know what i'm saying yeah. just because they don't know how to verbal judo they teach you in the academy they don't know how to talk you know what yeah. i'm saying but they also they also teach uh uh racial profiling you know what i'm saying it's a two-hour course so i don't have to you don't have to teach me how to racial profile nobody i'm, right. I'm black i, I mean in my opinion, yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. so who, why are y'all teaching people that you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so i i really wish man one day they would really just pull back the curtain of all of this stuff and, and get back to what it means to be a cop and actually just reform the whole thing. We might not get the defund, you know what I'm saying? That's a lot of steps to take, yeah. but let's start with reformation. Let's start with reforming, let's tear it down and rebuild it back up. Hire new people, you know what I'm saying? Hire some black people who wanna work in black communities. We need, we don't need to be, everyone can't say fuck the police. I'm right. glad I wasn't saying that because I made a difference in the black community, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So if everyone's shouting fuck the police and we black, then who's going to police our neighborhood you know, to show up then you know yeah, yeah bro you can go to africa there's cops there's black cops and, and i mean there's cops everywhere all over the world you know what i'm saying every nation has a a, a, a system you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so if we if we need to change the system then we need more people like us on the inside so there's that part too but I mean, there's so there's so much know, i ain't gonna hold you <laughs> We don't have time for from like you know the U.S. I know having more people incarcerated in other countries like combined. Yeah, the Thirteenth Amendment, the Thirteenth Amendment, bro. Yeah, and that's the one sad thing. Like you see people go to jail over a seat. Like now, I was a cop when the cameras wasn't that important. You know what I'm saying? So I, you see people go to jail over a seat, man. And that's what demotivated me to even keeping it on. I was like, dog, y'all just putting any anybody. And they was telling me to. Uh, put homeless people in jail i'm like for what like they don't got no you know what i'm saying so like you, already, say, bro, this, you know yeah and it's crazy yeah, and just, but like you said the like just the contrast where i just you know i think it might have been last week where um they had the attack on uh, capitol hill and one of the guys got mm -hmm. like six months i'm just like how like in what world is that possible where it's six months and you know in, look, in look, this world look, bro yeah <laughs> like you attack like the in, in this world <laughs> in jail but there's people out there for selling weed getting like for two three years you know what i mean so for now right but but even we let's let's make a billion let's make billions off of it now mm -hmm. out of nowhere mm -hmm. while there's still people incarcerated overseas yeah that's ridiculous man we're not talking about a 30-year span we're talking like 10. Yeah. people's getting arrested for season weed 10 years ago and now they're making billions of dollars off of it. So right. I don't got enough money to change the system, but we mm -hmm. know what the issues are. You know what I'm no, saying? So I think that's the main. Exactly. Yeah, yeah bro. So. And just, you know, keep people informed and continue the conversation. Cause yeah, that's it. We don't want yeah, to. That's all we can do. A, a real thing. Right. But yeah, you know, appreciate your time. Also heard there's a, you know, we make a donation with each episode of Community Voices. So uh, if you want to tell the people about the charity you picked, yeah, yep. So uh, shout out to Pittsburgh. Uh, so I chose a charity uh, called the Poise Foundation, mm -hmm. and more specifically, the Imani organization. Uh, they're a violence intervention program. Shout out to Reverend Cornell Jones out in Pittsburgh. 
He's uh, one of the main, he's a captain boots on the ground, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, just boots on the ground for the black on black violence, man. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Getting out in the communities and really uh, helping with communication between our people and, and police officers, helping police officers better understand us and helping us better understand each other. You know what I'm saying? Like right. black on black crime is a major issue. And I feel like we, we also have to tackle that. You know what I'm saying? Cause yeah. we need more people like us around spreading the message. And I, I'm tired of seeing us take each other out. You know what I'm saying? When there's so many more fights we need to be in right now. So, sure. you know what I'm saying? Shout out to them. And I appreciate y'all for that donation too, because it's, it's going to go a long way yeah, where that, I'm from. That, so thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's a wrap. Again, thank you so much for your time, Jay. Um, and I'll let you have the closing words. Nah, man, I want to say shout out to Finish Line. Shout out to, uh, uh, ah, I forgot the name. Um, not you, Omar, but what's the name of the, oh, JD, but. JD Sports, but yeah. The stamp. Yeah, so shout out, shout out to the whole movement, man, even though I forgot the name, I'm sorry. Well, good, um, good. But yeah, I love, I love what you guys are doing and uh, I'm happy to be a part of it and any way I can help the community, man, I'm here for it. So let's get it. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Y'all take care.